If you've ever walked into a workshop or seen footage of a welder at work, you've probably noticed something dramatic. A shower of bright flying sparks whenever metal is being ground or cut. It looks intense, almost like fireworks in a factory. But have you ever wondered why the same thing doesn't happen when someone grinds or sands a piece of wood? That contrast between the spark-filled chaos of metalwork and the quiet dustiness of woodworking actually reveals some fascinating truths about physics, chemistry, and material science. So today, we're diving into what causes those sparks, why they happen with metal but not wood, and what it all tells us about the materials we work with, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the star of the show, sparks. When someone uses an angle grinder or bench grinder on metal, those little flashes of light aren't just for show. They're tiny particles of metal being torn away from the surface and then rapidly oxidizing in midair. Here's how it works. Grinders work by spinning an abrasive wheel at high speeds. When that wheel makes contact with a metal surface, it doesn't just scrape off bits of the material, it applies a huge amount of friction and pressure. That pressure creates heat, a lot of it. In fact, grinding metal can easily generate temperatures of over 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to soften or even melt some types of metal. Now, when tiny pieces of metal, called swarf, are ripped away from the surface, they get thrown into the air. Because of the extreme heat and their tiny size, these bits of metal can oxidize almost instantly when exposed to oxygen in the air. That oxidation releases even more heat and light, resulting in what we see as a spark. So technically, each spark is a tiny burning particle of metal. It's not just light being reflected, it's an actual reaction happening in real time. Interestingly, not all metals spark the same way. Steel, especially carbon steel, tends to spark a lot. That's because carbon and iron react well with oxygen and generate plenty of heat when ground. In contrast, metals like aluminum or copper don't usually spark as much or at all. That's partly because they have different thermal properties and don't oxidize in the same fast, fiery way under grinding conditions. That's why, in a machine shop, you can often tell what type of metal someone is working with just by watching the color, shape, and volume of the sparks. Seasoned machinists actually use this as a technique called spark testing to identify unknown metals. Now that we've talked about why grinding metal creates sparks, let's flip the script and ask the opposite. Why doesn't this happen with wood? Well, it comes down to a few key differences. Starting with composition. Wood is an organic material. It's made mostly of cellulose, lignin, and water. Unlike metal, it doesn't have a crystalline structure, doesn't conduct electricity well, and doesn't produce high heat when ground. When you sand or grind wood, even aggressively, what you're really doing is tearing fibers apart. This process doesn't generate nearly the same kind of heat as grinding metal does. The friction is lower and the material is softer. And since wood isn't composed of metals that oxidize in high heat, there's nothing in it to ignite or flash when it's abraded. What you get instead is sawdust and lots of it. That dust can be a fire hazard if it builds up and encounters an open flame or spark from another tool. But it doesn't ignite in the same spontaneous way metal particles do. You might be thinking, but wait, wood can burn. So why doesn't it produce sparks when ground? Great question. Yes, wood burns, but it needs sustained heat to do so. When you light a campfire, you don't just rub wood together for a few seconds and get flames. 
you need tinder, kindling, and a good hot source to start combustion. Grinding wood just doesn't produce enough concentrated heat in a small enough space to cause ignition. Even if you're using a power sander or aggressive grinding tool, the surface area and lack of metallic reaction mean there's no spark-producing oxidation. Here's where things get interesting. Metal sparks aren't just hot, they look hot. The bright orange or white trail of flying particles isn't just about temperature. It's about how the material is breaking apart. Because the particles are tiny and hot, they burn up quickly and create a brilliant glow before cooling off and disappearing. Some of them even break apart mid-flight, creating forked or branching sparks. It's visually dramatic, but also incredibly useful. These sparks indicate that the metal is soft enough to be ground and that the wheel is doing its job. In contrast, the visual action during wood grinding is mostly dust clouds and fiber shavings. Useful? Absolutely, but flashy, not really. One thing that both metal and wood grinding have in common is the need for safety. Metal sparks might look beautiful, but they're also hot enough to cause burns, start fires, or damage equipment. That's why protective gear like goggles, gloves, fire-resistant clothing, and proper ventilation are essential when working with metal grinding tools. With wood, the biggest safety concern is dust. Fine wood particles can irritate the lungs and become combustible when airborne in high concentrations. That's why dust collection systems, masks, and respirators are crucial in any woodworking environment. If we want to get even deeper, we can look at the physics of energy transfer. Grinding is all about converting mechanical energy the force of the tool into heat and motion. When grinding metal, a large portion of that energy becomes heat because of the hardness of the material. That energy doesn't get absorbed easily, so it causes the metal to heat up, break down, and, if hot enough, oxidize. With wood, a lot of that energy is absorbed into the fibers themselves or dissipated as vibration or dust. Less energy turns into heat and certainly not enough to cause rapid oxidation, so no sparks. Understanding why sparks fly during metal grinding but not during wood grinding is more than just a curiosity. It's a lesson in how materials behave under stress and how we've learned to work with them over time. It also shows how much our tools and methods are shaped by the nature of the material we're using. We build different grinders, use different safety gear, and apply different techniques depending on whether we're cutting into steel or smoothing a plank of cedar. And once you notice these differences, you start to see them everywhere. In how welders work, how carpenters manage dust, and even in how factories are set up to handle metal versus wood fabrication. So the next time you see a spray of sparks coming off a grinding wheel or catch the fine dust of a sanded board, you'll know exactly what's happening and why. It all comes down to heat, oxidation, and the unique chemistry of what we're grinding. Simple actions, deep science. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.